Welcome to Belt of Truth Audio. Belt of Truth is a teaching resource that aims to share the gospel of Christ, edify the church, and teach Christians biblical truth in an age of confusion and lies. In Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul tells Christ's disciples to be strong in the Lord and His mighty power by putting on the full armor of God, so they can take their stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. End quote. We live in a period of history when the prevailing worldview in the West is anti-Christian. It isn't simply unchristian, as if our society hasn't known the Christian worldview or benefited from biblical truth. It is, in a very practical sense, anti-Christ. It rails against his teaching, his created order, and his loving rule as king of this world. The West has knowingly and defiantly exchanged God's truth for a lie, worshipping creatures instead of the Creator. Any quest for enlightenment or even salvation lies within the minuscule and fundamentally impotent orbit of mankind. Humanity, as individuals and collectives, is the way, the truth, and the life. Not Christ. As a result, our Western culture is predominantly subjective, which means most people don't hold to objective truth, that is, an absolute, universal truth about reality, identity, and nature that comes from our Creator. Instead, truth is relative. Truth is whatever someone feels. Truth is whatever the most influential group that has donned itself with moral authority deems acceptable. Truth is whatever an individual's psychology demands to affirm their self-perception and gratify their sinful desires. It is anything but what God has declared and made known to his creatures. It is rooted in arrogance and self-worship, as mortal creatures, who don't even know what the next minute brings, give little thought that their life, from beginning to end, is dependent on an all-powerful hand that fashioned it in love, in the image of the divine, and for a particular holy purpose. The fruit of this rebellious worldview, which denies God's authority, is a cornucopia of chaos, confusion, and conflict that feeds either groupthink or hyperindividualism. Reason and a conscience that holds the wellspring of God's presuppositional truths have given way to deep seated pathologies and wicked delusions that masquerade as normalcy and virtue. A society that embraces subjective truth as truth has cut up God's cohesive created order into a billion pieces and it has tried to glue them back together to create an image of sanity, civility, and beauty. The effort has been a futile and dismal failure, resulting in nothing less than a hideous distortion of creation and the self that plays itself out in political polarization, cultural clashes, ecclesiastical division, social media brawls, and family turmoil. No freedom reigns in such a world. No hint of real beauty can be seen. No true love can be known, only slavery to sin, hatred, and minds shrouded in darkness as hands grope for a candle that will never light because it has been soaked in the sweat of pride. Sadly, this infection of subjectivism has infiltrated the church, weakening it, subverting it, and leaving Christians defenseless, frustrated, faltering, and even faithless in a world that is constantly attacking the veracity of the scriptures and falsely accusing Christ's disciples of hate. Worried about how they are perceived, many have turned from the often lonely narrow path of life and set their feet on the broad and bustling road to destruction. Such fear and compliance to worldly wisdom are unacceptable for those who claim to be Christ's followers, for he has declared in no uncertain terms that we don't need self deluded politically correct notions of truth. We need the truth if we're going to be free of the slithering tendrils of sin that seek to bind us. 
without the truth, we are caged by our own sin and by the tyrannical powers of this world. Christians are not meant to live in fear or to walk in darkness as if they don't have the light of truth at their fingertips. They are called to be strong in the Lord. They are called to be children of light. They are called to look to God for truth, not to their own reflection in the mirror, not to the latest political podcast strutting about on a stage and signifying nothing, not to a secular education system steeped in nihilistic philosophies, not to an entertainment industry slathered in seductive degeneracy, and not to a celebrity-minded clergy seeking to please the world more than God. The mission of Belt of Truth is to push back against these raging tides that are swelling around us. This magazine, this ministry, aims to obey God's command to speak truth in love so that, by His Spirit, darkened minds will be renewed, hardened consciences softened, downcast souls encouraged, and dead hearts quickened for the love of God. In so doing, we earnestly pray, God willing, that there will be a revival in our nation, in our entire world, and that many will fall on their knees as they look to God, not themselves, and trust in the cross for the salvation of their souls. After all, it only takes a spark. And this endeavor is, admittedly, a most tiny spark. We simply and humbly plant the seeds. God brings in the harvest, and it will be a great harvest even if only one soul is saved. Our confidence is in Christ alone, and He always overcomes. His grace, His sacrifice, is always effective to bring about His will. He did not lay down his life on the cross in vain. He did not die with a mere fanciful hope that someone might possibly believe in him. He did not suffer pain and torment to leave his people to wander in the world alone like beaten dogs. No. He died to secure salvation for his people, names he established in eternity past before the light of the sun ever broke the darkness of space. He suffered for the certainty of faith among those he has called. He bled to establish a place in heaven for those he has named as members of the family of God. If you are his, he died not for the possibility of you, but for the certainty of you. He knows you. He gave his life for you. He has saved you. He will deliver you. He loves you. The cross is a powerful surety, not only for the life to come, but for this life. Nothing will defeat it. Nothing can stand against it. Calvary is a power like no other. We have merely forgotten just how powerful it is, how strong our God is, how glorious His might and His enduring and gracious love. Christians don't need to be afraid of the world, for our Saviour is King over it. Christians don't need to quake in the face of disaster, because our Father has a purpose, and it is always good. Christians can face hordes of hateful malcontents and speak his truth without fear because our Lord faced that same persecution. He didn't falter, and by his strength and through the power of his spirit, we won't either. Why? Because we belong to him, and he will never forsake his own. Thank you for listening to Belt of Truth Audio.